Hello and Merry Christmas season. We today are going to be showing you how to take just a standard block of wood and using the portobello stamp to create a darling scene of gingerbread houses. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is cut your wood. Um, Aaron actually took some wood he just happened to have on his property. They live, you know, up in the hills and they just have um, wood there. So he took some just two by fours and different sizes and he cut the corners off to create the shape of a house. So you can buy these preformed if you want. Um, they're available. Uh, you know, they can get a little bit pricey, but not too bad if you find a good source. And then you're going to take a chalk type paint and you're going to just cover it with your choice of gingerbread brown. Um, there's, you can do like a warmer gingerbread brown or go dark. It just depends on your decor and how you want that to look. Now pay attention to the wood. If you need to sand it, sand it. I actually found later that I wish I had given it a sand. Um, because the way the stamps take on it will be affected by how smooth the surface is. All right, so this will take a little bit of planning because you're going to want to decide how you want things. So I took this piece and I layered it to create a chapel. You don't have to do that, but it's just kind of a way to create some interest and have different types of uh, buildings and little cottages and things. And perfection is not what you're going for here. This is a very rustic look. So don't get too caught up in those um, little details. You can see here, this is anything but perfect, but I still love how it came out. Um, so you're going to, if you want to do a little chapel type thing, you're going to want the chapel piece to be a little thinner so that it doesn't get too thick and higher than your block of wood. And then you just line up the bottom, the top will go overlap and go up above and that's what kind of creates that steeple look. All right, so planning wise, you're going to look at all of your portobello and um, decide what you want on which building. You can start with one or you can plan it all out in advance. I had a general idea of what I wanted to do, um, but I took each piece individually and decided specifically what windows I wanted, what doors I wanted, um, so I didn't get too planny about it. Now. A note about this next step. Here you can see that I'm using our mixing white with our IOD ink pad. Had I to do over, I actually prefer, and I've used both so I could compare, I would prefer using a chalk type white paint. You get a more opaque finish. With the stamp pad, you get a more detailed, refined finish, but is not as, the contrast isn't as much, and it's not as thick. So you can decide what you really would like. Again, I would prefer using a chalk type white paint. And if you do that, um, you will skip this step, obviously, and then you will just squirt some paint onto a plate or a flat surface and use a brayer to spread it out. And then you're going to um, uh, brayer it onto your stamping surface, your design surface and stamp it just like you otherwise would. So that will be different if you choose to go with a paint for your uh, design. Okay, so here I am actually going to start by doing the roof tiles. I love this little scaled roofing pattern uh, to create a darling little gingerbread roof. It works great. But here are some things I learned in the process. As you are lining up these sections, if you want them to be seamless, those top points will actually layer up into the bottom, the kind of the the top part of the bottom scallop. You'll see what I mean if you look at the way I lay this stamp down. Uh, 
as I go to put on this second layer down here, you can see how I went too low and you can see the spacing of the different sections. So I will show you how to do it the correct way on the other side of the roof once I kind of got a hang of it. See how I'm taking that top point and I'm actually putting it up toward the top of the scallop. It's a, it's a minor difference, but it actually closes up that seam very nicely so that you don't see that it's a different section of stamp. So that's what I learned on the uh, stamping the roof tiles. So you can see there that it is nicely aligned. So I'm just doing a little bit of planning here. I really like this bakery, so I'm trying to see which storefront it's going to fit best. Um, I'm looking at it on all of the different pieces and uh, seeing how I wanna lay things out, where I have room for doors, where I have room for windows. If you wanna get really detailed, you can measure things. I did not do that. I just kind of went for it um, and everything worked out fine. Uh, but if that makes you nervous and you work in a more detailed way, then definitely get out your ruler and it does not take long to just measure out the stamp and measure out your piece. Um, so I quickly learned that the best uh, piece to use the bakery storefront on was the taller one. And I just ink it up and I lay down that stamp and look how darling it came out. I love how this stamp looks. There's so much detail in the Portobello stamp. It's a um, Dickensian feel, very based on our experience in London and Portobello Road, one of our places, favorite places to frequent. And um, you can see here that it's just so cute. The, the little bakeries and the... Um, awnings and striped awnings there's just so much charm and we just try to capture that in this stamp set So now I'm gonna see what is going to fit. Um, my masks will definitely come in later as I'm layering stone and windows and doors. The masks that come with this set, all of our stamps, or I should say 90% of our stamps, um, the ones that make sense to use with masks have masks with them. And those come, just really come in handy as you're layering stamps to create depth and dimension without the uh, just noise and busyness when you're layering detailed stamps like this. Okay, so here is where you're going to see that come into play. Um, we layer a mask onto the window. You do want to make sure it's you know dry to the touch um, so that it, it doesn't smear your ink or anything like that. But it's not it's not super prone to smearing because of the slickness of the mask. And yeah, that's, I, I really like this brick. Now, when you're stamping on top of a mask, it will naturally tend to come up with the stamp that you're stamping over it. That's okay, just lay it gently back down. It's, it, it will happen, it's not a big deal. Now, 
Now this, um, this piece did not require a whole lot of lining up on the brick, which was handy. So if you want to not fuss with the brick too much, having a door or windows really breaks it up and help, helps you be able to just do one side of the door and the other side of the door without having to have too many areas where you're lining up the brick. Um, it's not really tricky, but it just does take a little more intention and uh, just looking and making sure that you're puzzling that brick together well. You know, we always recommend um, stamping on a like just blank piece of paper or scrap wood uh, to test different things, test the texture, test how much pressure you need to use in order to get the impression that you want. And everybody's different. Some people like a little bit of a lighter hand um, and a softer look, and some people really like that ink to take in and create that contrast. So just practice and get it the way that you want it. I'm lining it up um, here, and you can see it's it's not really tricky to line up at all. There is a little space there, but you'll be able to see when it's all done, you don't notice any of that within the brick pattern. And if you've ever seen old brick, you know that, that it is anything but perfect anyway. So as long as you're not creating a continuous seam line where it's really drawing your eye, you should be fine. And that's why I do recommend if you're doing large areas, as you'll see me do later, um, that you stagger the section of brick as you're stamping so that if you don't line it up perfectly, that misalignment is staggered as well. One thing to note um, is that I actually found later that re-inking my pad often um, kept that impression darker, which is more important if you're using the ink because the ink will tend to soak into the wood more and lighten up as it dries. So use plenty of it. Um, you don't want it to be sloppy, but I re-inked um, fairly often, more often than I normally would with another stamping project. And you'll see here I've gotten the hang of uh, layering those uh, tiles and so it's completely seamless now that I've gotten the hang of it. Okay, I'm starting with the church and I just wanted to um, point out a tip in the way that I'm doing the window. I wanted to have all of this tall, gorgeous door on the surface. I didn't want to cut it off. So what I decided to do in order to fit a window above it is amend the window. The way I do that is I just ink half of the window and then I stamp it down, and then I just ink the very top of the window to, to cap it off. So I'm making it basically a single, I don't know what you'd call that, a single sash window instead of a double sash window. And you can do that um, with this stamp set. You can make the doors shorter, you can make the windows uh, square instead of rectangle. Um, there's a lot of amendments you can do simply by uh, stamping the ink or paint on a different area of the stamp and using it that way. Um, the the stamp is set up for that because of all of the detailed architecture that exists in it. I also wanted to add a little paint. I felt like this really added a lot. I'm using a chalk type paint for this in the color white. Um, and I'm just painting the corners. You can go crazy on this. I'm painting the top of the steeple and then I liked it so much. Um, 
I painted the whole roof on just the steeple part. And then I liked it so much, I decided to paint a little bit of snow on the other houses as well. And I really like how that turned out. And I think that's it, you guys. I think that shows you everything that you need to know to make your own darling little gingerbread village. I hope you have fun with it and enjoy your Christmas this season.